Some people swear by their airline credit cards. After all, earning those frequent flyer miles is a pretty good deal, but often it's the general travel credit cards that people have in mind when they're looking for a new credit card. So which should you get? An airline branded credit card or a more general travel credit card? Each has their own pros and cons. Let me help weigh out how to decide which credit card is best for you. First, let's talk about earning rewards. Each type of credit card earns their own sort of rewards currency. Airline credit cards earn airline frequent flyer miles. Some airlines have points, but typically these are frequent flyer miles, so you can only spend them at that airline. Some airlines have partnerships with other airlines or they belong to an airline alliance, so you might be able to use those miles to book travel on a partner airline, but by and large, you earn miles to use on that specific airline. In contrast, if you have a general travel credit card, you'll earn a general travel currency. Now, these are also just as made up of currencies as frequent flyer miles, but they can be used for many more things. So if you have certain Chase travel credit cards, you'll earn Chase Ultimate Rewards Points. An American Express card earns American Express Membership Rewards Points. So these points can often just be used to book travel in those banks' own travel portals, but they can also be used for other things. You can often transfer them to other hotel or airline loyalty programs. These banks have partnerships with certain airlines and hotels, so you can send your points there and often they are more valuable when used this way. This is a really nice option because if you're not certain, you're always going to want those frequent flyer miles. Maybe you want to pay for a hotel because you're doing a road trip instead of a flight, then this can be a way to get more flexible rewards. Up next to consider is sign up bonuses. These are typically special offers you get when you apply for the card. The terms vary, but typically you'll get a huge boatload of points or frequent flyer miles if you hit a certain spending threshold within a period of applying for that card. I'm not going to say one sign up bonus is better than the other, whether it's airline or travel credit cards. Check the terms and you can always visit nerdwallet.com for a list of the credit cards with the best sign up bonuses. Of course, my advice is to always apply for a credit card timed around a major purchase, so maybe you know you're buying a new couch, this might be a good time to really take advantage of that sign-up bonus to ensure that you'll meet the spending requirements. The next thing to consider is spending rewards. Most credit cards will earn you bonus points for spending on that card, particularly in certain categories. It's pretty common for travel credit cards to offer you bonus points on, well, travel purchases, but you might also find travel credit cards that offer bonus points on things like dining out at restaurants. If you're always dining out, now, it could be good to apply for a credit card that offers bonus points in these categories. Now, airline credit cards certainly can. There are airline credit cards out there that offer bonus points at restaurants, but it's more common that airline credit cards offer bonus points for spending on that airline. If you're frequently spending a lot of money on that airline, you have a big family and you're always booking expensive airfares for them, then it can certainly make sense to apply for that airline branded credit card to take advantage of those bonus points. Just analyze your own spending and calculate how that factors into the bonus points earned on that card to make sure that your spending is earning the most rewards. The next thing to consider is annual fees. Again, this is kind of a toss up as to whether airline or travel credit cards are better. The reality is both of these cards often have $0 annual fee versions and they have versions that have annual fees in the many hundreds of dollars. You'll have to do your own calculations as to what the benefits actually entail to decide whether paying that annual fee is really worth it to you. So I talked about the benefits and the benefits can vary and especially with credit cards that have high annual fees, the benefits can be pretty great. Let's start by talking about airline credit cards. Of course, not air every airline credit card has the same benefits. Benefits vary by the annual fee you pay as well as the actual brand of the airline, but it's pretty common to find airline credit cards that offer benefits on that airline. I'm thinking about things like automatic elite status. They can offer things like free checked bags. There might be free Wi-Fi in flight. So just analyze what your own spending is sans credit card. If you're always checking bags, then sometimes that annual fee can pay for itself on the checked bag fees alone. When it comes to travel credit cards, there are benefits of its own there. Some travel credit cards also offer automatic elite status with certain airline or hotel brands. They might offer something like lounge access, so you get to relax in the lounge before your flight. Even if it's not tied to any sort of airline branded credit cards, there are general travel credit cards that get you into generic airline lounges. 
You might also factor in other benefits. I'm talking about things like trip insurance or rental car insurance. Both types of credit cards offer these, and often these benefits alone can more than outweigh the annual fee. So should you apply for an airline credit card or a general travel credit card? It's a personal decision and it depends on your spending as well as how much you want to commit to. If you're committed to always flying with a certain airline, and this could be because you live in that airline's hub city, or maybe you always traverse the same flight because you're always flying to your company's headquarters on the same exact route, on the same exact airline, then maybe having that airline credit card can really be worth it to you. Again, factor in all those benefits. If you're going to check back and you really value that airline elite status and the upgrades that it entails, then maybe having that airline credit card can really be worth it. Just understand that you are committed. So if you move and you're moving to a new city that that airline doesn't serve, now you're committed to this airline credit card and all of these frequent flyer miles, which you might have a hard time using. In that case, it can certainly be better to actually just have a general travel credit card. These cards can be used at far more places. You're not committed to a certain airline. So that way, even if you decide maybe you're not flying at all, you're going to take a road trip or you're going to rent an RV or you're not just traveling this year, you might actually find that a more general travel credit card is worth it to you. That flexibility can be super valuable. I'm Sally French, a travel and credit cards writer for NerdWallet, and I actually have an airline and travel branded credit card. I travel so much that I find it's valuable to have both. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe.